This video will show you how to create a one-step coordinate system using the Create Coordinate System application in Leica Captivate software. Please note that one-step coordinate systems should be limited to small areas. Uh, there are other transformation methods that are better suited to larger projects. In this case, we have two projects. We have one, ATCS Local, that has our control coordinates. And I have loaded an ASCII file. This is a local job. Uh, it's not tied to state plane coordinate systems. It just is a, uh, a standard project with uh, northern easting values that have been assumed. And I have a second project. This is 14693 local. And this, we've actually went out and observed the points from our ATCS local job using our GNSS receiver. Now, uh, for this project, and I would make the, this recommendation to you, that I would recommend that you always use the same point numbers for your GNSS measurements that are in the control file. That will make using the software and calculating your coordinate system easier. So once we have our data collected for our points, we want to go to Create Coordinate System. Um, if you've not used this before, it, it may be uh, way to the right in your application carousel, but once you find that, you'll, you'll click on the icon and you'll set your method to one step. Uh, we do have several other methods, but in this case, again, we are doing a one step transformation. Select that and again, you'll note here that they are, they ask you to, they do caution you with some size limitations. Once you have one step selected, press OK. Then you need to give the coordinate system a name. This should be something that you're going to be able to recognize as you will be using this coordinate system each time you come out and work on this job. And you can continue to use this uh, until the reference station information changes and, uh, and that may be many years of using this coordinate system. So we'll give this name of 14693. You then want to select the job where your WGS 84 points are stored. This is where your GNSS measurements are. And then we want to select the job where our local coordinates are stored. In this case, we'll select ATCS local. And press OK. We're not going to use a one point localization method for this, and I'm not going to explain what that is at this point. So once you have these job files selected, we can press OK. You want to set your height mode to orthometric and then press OK. And we're not going to use a GOE model as we're going to create our own separation values between our GNSS measurements and the local coordinate values that we have. So we'll press OK here. Now you see I'm at a match point screen and there are no items to display. The reason we used the same point IDs in both files is so that we could use the auto match functionality here. And this will automatically match the points uh, from your GNSS survey to your control file. You'll notice that the points are now matched in position and height. If you have points that don't have a horizontal position or, or you're unsure of the horizontal position or you're unsure of the vertical position, you could choose to match these in position or height only. And the way you would do that is by selecting the point and then pressing the match button here on your, your screen. As I press the match, it will scroll through the different options. So now point 23 would only be matched in our transformation in position only. I'll press match again, height only, press match, and it will actually actually exclude this point from the computations. But for the first time now, I want to go ahead and match it in, in both position and height. So I'll press match again, and we're back to where we started. Once Now you could uh, add points to this. If you if you did use differing point numbers in your GNSS file versus your uh, local coordinate file, you could add that also. You would do that by pressing new, and then you could match uh, different uh, points with differing numbers. Just need to make sure, of course, that they are in the right orientation. Uh, in this case, in this file, we did use the same point numbers for all of our all of our survey points. So I'm just going to hit the back button, and we're now ready to calculate our transformation. So I'll press calculate and we now have residuals displayed. You'll notice that the largest residuals in both the northing and easting are flagged 
by an exclamation point. So here on point 20, we we actually this is the height that's been flagged, and we can scroll down and see that on point 38, that's our biggest east residual, and we'll continue to scroll through and we'll check the differing residual for each point. And you'll notice that point 18 has our largest um, northern residual. If we want, if we didn't like the residuals at this point, we could hit our back button. It would be back to our position and height match screen, and we could exclude those points from the calculation and recalculate the transformation. So I'm going to hit calculate again. So once I have the results the way I want them, I will press OK. If we now have a summary of what we've done, and it actually points out again our largest residuals, the number of points that are matched. We can look at our coordinate system, and we can make it a choice of what to do with the residuals. If you leave the residuals set to none, then you essentially have a best fit, but the errors that you saw, the residual values that you saw in the coordinate system computations will be left at each GNSS point. So when you go to lay that out with your GNSS receiver, you may see uh, those values. If you choose one of the other options, then the residuals will be distributed uh, so that your local coordinate system and the values you have on your um, WGS-84 coordinate system will match exactly at your control points. So in this case, I'm going to choose one over distance and going to press store. Now the coordinate system has been created. If we look at our job and go to our job properties, you'll notice that it does tell me that we now have the 14693 coordinate system attached to the job. So if I come back to the site tomorrow and use my GNSS receiver, I can create a new job. So in this case, I might say 14693, and I'd like to use a date, so I'll say 07 April. And then I can page over to my coordinate system. And because that was the last used coordinate system, it did automatically attach that. I could go ahead and select any of the other coordinate systems that are in my um, on my controller. But in this case, 14693 is what I want to use. So I'll press OK. And I'll press Store. And so now when I connect to our RTN network, I will be using uh, the local coordinate system for the job.